Hello everybody. This is Roger Hansen with the strange, the bizarre, and the unusual. Today I am going to be talking about the Amityville Horror story and then we'll get into the Warrens considering they're the ones that brought the, the story into, into being basically. The Amityville Horror. A True Story is a book by J. Hansen published in September 1977. It is also the basis of 10 films released between 1979 and 2011. The book is said to be based on the real life paranormal experience of the Lux family, but has led to controversy and lawsuits over its truthfulness. In December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved into 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, a suburban neighborhood located on the south shore of Long Island, New York. Thirteen months before the Lutz moved in, Ronald Defoe Jr. had shot and killed six members of his family at, at the house. After 29 days, the Lutz family left the house, claiming to have been terrorized by paranormal phenomena while living there. The house at 112 Ocean Avenue remained empty for 13 months after the Defoe murders. In December 1975, George and Kathleen Lutz bought the house for what was considered to be a bargain price of $80,000. The six bedroom house was built in Dutch colonial style and had a distinctive gambrel roof. It also had a swimming pool and a boathouse. As it was located on a canal, George and Kathy married in July 1975 and each had their own homes. They wanted to start fresh with a new property. Kathy had three children from a previous marriage, Daniel, who was nine, Christopher, who was seven, and Melissa, or Missy, who was five. They also owned a, a crossbreed Malamute Labrador dog named Harry. During their first inspection of the house, the real estate broker told them about the Defoe murders and asked if this would affect their decision. After discussing the matter, they decided that it was not a problem. The Lutz family moved in December the 19th, 1975. Much of the family furniture was still in the house because it was included for $400 as a part of the deal. A friend of George Lutz learned about the history of the house and insisted on having it blessed. At the time, George was a non-practicing Methodist and had no experience of what this would entail. Kathy was a non-practicing Catholic and explained the process. George knew a Catholic priest named Father Ray who agreed to carry out the house blessings. In Hansen's book, Real Life Priest, Father Ralph J. Decoraro was referred to as Father Marcuso for privacy reasons. Father Marcuso was a lawyer, judge of the Catholic Church, and psychotherapist who lived in the local Sacred Heart Rectory. He arrived to perform the blessing while George and Kathy were unpacking their belongings in the afternoon of December the 18th, 1975, and went into the building to carry out the rites. When he flickered the first holy water and began to pray, he heard a masculine voice demand that he get out. On leaving the house, Father Marcuso did not mention this incident to either George or Kathy. December the 24th, 1975, Father Marcuso called George Lutz and advised him to stay out of the second floor room where he had heard the mysterious voice, the former bedroom of Mark and John Matthew Defoe that Kathy planned to use as a sewing room. 
but the call was cut short by static. Following his visit to the house, Father Marcuso allegedly developed a high fever and blisters similar to stigmata. At first, George and Kathy experienced nothing unusual. Talking about their experiences frequently, they reported that it was as if they were each living in a different house. Some of the experiences of the Lutz family at the house have been described as follows. George would wake up around 3.15 every morning and would go out to check the boathouse. Later, he would learn that this was the estimated time of the Defoe killings. The house was plagued by swarms of flies despite the winter weather. Kathy had vivid nightmares about the murders and discovered the order in which they occurred and the rooms where they took place. The Lutz children also began sleeping on their stomachs in the same way that the dead bodies of the DeVoe murderers had been found. Kathy would feel a sensation as if being embraced in a loving manner by an unseen force. George discovered a small hidden room around 4 feet by 5 feet behind shelving in the basement. The walls were painted red and the room did not appear in the blueprints of the house. The room came to be known as the Red Room. This room had a profound effect on their dog Harry who refused to go near it and cowered as if sensing something ominous. There were cold spots and odors of perfume and excitement in areas of the house where no wind drifts or piping would explain the source. While tending to the fire, George and Kathy saw the image of a demon with half his head blown off. It was burned into the soot in the back of the fireplace. The Lutz, five-year-old daughter, Missy, developed an imaginary friend named Jody, a demonic pig-like creature with glowing red eyes. George would wake up to the sound of the front door slamming. He would race downstairs to find the dog sleeping soundly at the front door. Nobody else heard the sound, although it was loud enough to wake the house. George would hear what was described as a German marching band turn tuning up or what sounded like a clock radio playing not quite on frequency. When he went downstairs, the noise would cease. George realized that he bore a strong resemblance to Ronald Defoe Jr. and began drinking at the Witch's Brew, the bar where Defoe was once a regular customer. Closing Missy's window, which Missy said Jody climbed out of, Kathy saw red eyes glowing at her. While in bed, Kathy received red whelps on her chest caused by an unseen force and was levitated two feet in the air. Locks, doors, and windows in the house were damaged by an unseen force. Cloven hoof, hoof prints attributed to an enormous pig appeared in the snow outside of the house on January 1st, 1976. Green gelatin-like slime oozed from the walls in the hall and also from the keyhole of the playroom door in the attic. A 12-inch, 30-centimeter crucifix hung in the living room by Kathy revolved until it was upside down and gave off a sour smell. George tripped over a four-foot-high, one-and-a-half-meter China lion ornament in the living room and found bite marks on one of his ankles. George saw Kathy transform into an old woman of 90, the hair wild, a shocking white, the face a, a mass of wrinkles and ugly lines, saliva dripping from the toothless mouth. Missy would sing constantly while in her room. Whenever she left the room, she would stop singing, and upon returning, she would resume singing where she left off. After deciding that something was wrong with their house, they could not explain rationally. George and Kathy Lux carried out a blessing of their own on January the 8th, 1976. George held a silver crucifix while they both recited the Lord's Prayer and while in the living room. George allegedly heard a 
chorus of voices asking him, will you stop? By mid-January 1976, after another attempt at a house blessing by George and Kathy, they experienced what would turn out to be their final night. In Let's decline to give a full count of the events that took place on this occasion, describing them as too frightening. After getting in touch with Father Marcuse, the Lutz decided to take some belongings and stay at Kathy's mother's house in nearby Deer Park, New York, until they had sorted out the problems with the house. They claimed that the phenomenon followed them there with a final scene of Anson's books describing greenish-black slime coming up the staircase towards them. January the 14th, 1976, George and Kathy Lutz with their three children and their dog, Harry, left 112 Ocean Avenue, leaving all their possessions behind. Next day, a mover came in to, to remove all of the possessions to send to the Lutz. He, he reported no paranormal phenomena while inside the house. The book was written after Tam Mossman, an editor at the publishing house, Prentice Hall, introduced George and Kathy Lutz to Jay Anson. The Lutzes did not work directly with Anson, but submitted about 45 hours of tape recollections to him, which were used as the basis of the book. Estimates of the sales of the books are around 10 million copies from its numerous editions. Hansen said to have based the title on the Ambiza Horror on Dunwich Horror by H.P. Lovecraft. Hope you've enjoyed what you've heard. If you have, please like, subscribe, and share.